Hey guys, so I got an email from a friend who knows an 8th grader who's doing a project on the Mandela Effect. Um, the teacher actually emailed some questions about the Mandela Effect, so I didn't answer all the questions, but I figured I'd make a video on my answers and just ask you guys to answer some of the questions in the comment section. So. Some of the questions in the email were, what is the scientific explanation of how the brain creates false memories? And these are the questions that the, the teacher emailed my friend and then my friend emailed me. Um, another question was, do you think the Mandela effect could be proof of alternative realities or loopholes on earth? If the brain can so convincingly create memories or explanations that are untrue, can it have other flaws that may impact us? Um, is the popularity of the Mandela effect on social media feeding or hurting the credibility of the theory? So I'll put a, a I'll just post the questions in the description below, but. I just wanted to read some of my answers to a couple of the questions. So one of the questions was, let me get my paper. One of the questions was, why do people experience the Mandela effect? And I said, when I first became conscious of the Mandela effect, I thought that only a certain percentage of the population experienced the Mandela effect. But after years of asking everyone I knew, as well as countless individuals online about what they remembered, I realized that everyone is affected by at least a couple Mandela Effect examples slash changes. Different Mandela Effect examples slash changes resonate more or less with different people. In other words, if someone is given a list of Mandela Effect examples slash changes and asked what they remember, there's a very good chance that at least a couple changes will resonate as legitimate le Mandela effect examples slash changes for that person. What I found is that most people I've encountered usually have a large list of Mandela affected memories. Often once the person is told that the way they remember something never existed due to it being a Mandela effect, that person tends to dismiss their own recollection as misremembering instead of accepting that they have been affected by the Mandela effect. For example, a person may erase their original memory of mirror mirror on the wall and rewrite their own memory with magic mirror on the wall once they are told about this Snow White Mandela effect in order to soothe their sense of cognitive dissonance. So for anyone who's doesn't know about the Mandela effect, mirror, mirror on the wall, that line never ever existed, but we all remember it that way. Um, well, let me go back to what I wrote. It is not easy to face that the Mandela effect is real. Instead of asking, why do people experience the Mandela effect? It may be helpful to reframe the question to, why do some people acknowledge that they are affected by the Mandela effect? while some people refuse to acknowledge that they are affected by the Mandela effect. Personally, I think the answer to that question comes down to whether a person is open-minded or not. I think another factor that plays a role in the ability to acknowledge the Mandela effect is the degree to which one is able to cope with fear of the unknown. Our best scientists are not able to understand why or how the Mandela effect works or the implications that the Mandela effect has on the construction of our reality. So science has wrongfully dismissed the Mandela effect as memory anomaly, i.e. confabulation, misremembering, etc. As human beings, we are taught from a very young age that phenomenon like the Mandela effect are not possible. However, if one is fearless enough and open-minded enough to look beyond the boundaries of what we've been taught to believe, then it's possible to acknowledge that the Mandela Effect is a very real phenomenon. So that was my answer to one of the questions. And then um, another question that um, 
they asked in the email is, what is the scientific explanation of how the brain creates false memories? Today's scientific community will claim to have the answers as to why the Mandela effect is fake. Uh, they call it mass misremembering, confabulation. Um, I think those are more so labels rather than an actual explanation they're providing, but that's, that's what they say the answer to the Mandela effect is. Um, so today's scientific community will claim to have the answers as to why the Mandela effect is fake, but the real reason they do not support the Mandela effect is because they have not yet developed the right framework or tools to understand consciousness. In order to understand the Mandela effect, we must first understand consciousness because consciousness is the foundation of our perceived reality. Depending on which scientists you ask, the matter model of reality takes precedence over the consciousness model of reality. The scientific community still has a long way to go in learning about the nature of consciousness. In the future, quantum physics may serve as a bridge to help us explore consciousness. Um, then he asked, do you think the Mandela effect is purely a flaw made by the human brain or could it be more impactful on human life? And I wrote back and said, I do not think the Mandela effect is purely a flaw made by the human brain. I think the Mandela effect is so much more than that. Accepting that the Mandela effect is real is life changing. It changes the way one thinks about reality, dreams, and consciousness itself. It opens the door to a whole new way of seeing the world. It allows us to understand that we humans do not know as much as we thought we knew about the world, which helps us be more open to learning new things. And then the last question I answered was, uh, what causes us to remember false events with such detail? So my uh, response to that was, assuming your question is in reference to the Mandela effect, I would like to point out that the question makes the assumption that the events that were remembered are false memories. Human memory is not perfect and we do misremember past events sometimes. However, when it comes to specific Mandela effect examples, it's important to remember that the people who are willing to acknowledge the Mandela effect as real do not see the Mandela effect examples slash changes as being false events, despite the fact that our current consensus reality differs from what we experienced in our past. Often our memories of something that has been affected by the Mandela effect will have an anchor memory attached to it. An anchor memory is an additional memory that is intertwined with the original memory and serves to validate the original memory. I think one question that may be important to consider is how is it possible for such a large number of people to have the same exact memory of something that, according to today's consensus reality, never happened. For example, if we were truly all misremembering the famous Snow White line, mirror, mirror on the wall, then it would be remembered in different ways by different people. For example, some people would remember the line as fairy mirror on the wall or mirror, mirror hung on the wall or simply just mirror on the wall, but an unequivocally huge number of people only remember it as mirror, mirror on the wall. It's statistically improbable that such a large number of people would have the exact same memory of something that supposedly never existed. Now, some may argue, oh, you got the mirror, mirror line out of a book and unknowingly transferred it to the movie line. But the only problem with that explanation is that I've never read the Snow White book. I think a larger number of people have seen the Snow White movie than read the book. Maybe the answer as to why such a large number of people remember the line the exact same way is that we actually experienced the line as being mirror, mirror on the wall in our past. How and why our current reality has changed to has changed the line to magic mirror on the wall as something that will take time to understand. Quantum physics is in the beginning stages of exploring how time and space work. 
As of today, quantum physics acknowledges that time is not always linear. The discovery of quantum entanglement also validates the fact that space is not what we thought it was. In the future, quantum physics may serve as a helpful window into explaining how the Mandela effect works. Until then, our job is to keep an open mind and not assume that the Mandela effect is false just because we haven't advanced to the point of being able to understand it yet. <sighs> all right. That was a lot of reading. <laughs> okay, you guys. So that's all I wrote. Um, thanks for watching. Um, if you are not willing to accept the Mandela effect, that's fine. Um, don't bother to leave a comment. For the rest of you guys, definitely leave a comment. Tell, um, tell the person who wrote me the email. Tell them about any anchor memories you have or theories about uh, the cause of the Mandela effect that you may have. And... Um, just take some time to answer some of the questions in the comments. And like I said earlier, all the questions from the email are in the description below. All right, I'll talk to you guys later.